Well, this is what got me started on doing my maple syrup. I went to a yard sale and I found 17, I think it was, 17 of these old-fashioned taps or spiles or whatever they're called. I'm not sure. Um, some of them have, you can read the writing on them. Solely. That's Canada. Canada. I boiled all these taps really good to kind of clean some of the crud off of them and the bugs. And then uh, most of them did not have any of these hooks. So what I figured out is I can just cut out, cut a hole in a little milk jug and hang it on there and it just drips into a milk jug and it keeps a lot of the bugs and stuff and dirt out of the sap too. It's worked out really well and I'll show you that later. Um, I also use, uh, you can use a dead blow hammer or something. I don't want to use uh, a hammer with, you know, a regular ball bean hammer or whatever to tap the taps in because it would crush the ends of the taps. You can see these old ones, they have a little bit of, they've been bent and hit on a few times and stuff. I use this plastic hammer, it taps them in pretty good and it doesn't damage them anymore. And then the last thing is a drill. You can use a hand drill or a power drill to do this. And I have a half inch bit on the end which meets, meets up with the diameter of the plug end of the tap. Because you want a good, what I found out is you want a good seal around this part. So you want to tap them in good and hard because the the sap will leak around the outside of these taps and you don't want that. And then I'll go outside and I'll show you what I'm doing outside and how much sap I have already. Okay, well this is the next morning. I've the sap is really running, so I've had to uh, start boiling some, some of this down. And I'm trying to do everything as cheap as possible. I don't have a budget at all to do this, really. Um, the little taps that I bought, I got at a yard sale that you just saw earlier. Um, I think I paid 2 $3 for the whole bunch of those, which was a killer deal on that. Vintage, uh, vintage um, taps. And then... I'm using our canner that I cleaned out really good. Everything has to be clean, so I cleaned the canner out really well. And then uh, I didn't have the materials right away to build a firebox. I have plenty of wood and everything, but I just didn't have the other stuff to build that. So I decided to do it on our old grill. You know, I have a full tank of gas there and a the little side burner. We're starting to get a little steam off of here. I got about four inches of uh, sap right in here right now. I brought out a spoon so you can stir it from time to time. Right now it won't need to be stirred because I just put that in there. So I'm just going to let it cover up until it gets up to simmer temp. And then you pretty much just want to let it simmer. Now I'm going to also show you how I'm collecting my sap which is on the super cheap too. I did have to go out and get a couple of new uh, buckets with lids on them. You want to get food safe buckets and then put your sap in there and I store them, store them in the snow. And you can see there's some particles in there so I do have to filter it, which I did make a filter. Super cheap too. So I'll show you that. So I got about 20 gallons of uh, sap right now. Okay. These maples are all on the south side of my house, so they really flow really well. They get a lot of heat. Um, I had a lot of these uh, water bottles saved up just for this purpose. And then you can see the tap right there, and it's flowing really well in my bucket. And I have to empty these one-gallon containers two or three times a day. And then when I get up in the morning, it's they're full too. Then I took another um, water jug and I cut out the bottom and put like four layers of cheesecloth on there and screwed the cap on really well and it gets about 90% of those particles out of there. And I do that when I uh, pour it into my bucket, I filter it through this and then I filter it again when I pour it back into the, the canner. 
So I'll, I'll show you this real quick. As you can see, I just pour it in the top of that and let it filter through and you can actually see the particles get trapped in that cheesecloth. You know, I, I read a lot of different stuff that you had to use, you know, candy filters and all this other stuff. And I'm, I don't have money for any of that, so I'm just doing everything as cheap as possible. My biggest expense right now are probably the couple of buckets that I bought. There, that's how you filter that. And this bucket's pretty clean. This will be the one next one going into the canner. <clears throat> and then all I did was drill a hole in the bucket and it hooks right on that hook right there on the tap and it'll hold the whole entire weight of the container right on it. It'll just sit right on there that whole just like this one the entire weight of that is on just sitting on there and it, it works good. Now we're steaming really good. So we just want to get this to a simmer and keep it constantly simmering all day. And I'll boil it down to just a couple inches in the bottom of this pan and then uh, pour some more into it and just keep concentrating it down. Um, you know, the most I expect to get out of everything here today is probably a quart of maple syrup, but for me it's worth it. I love doing stuff my own. Ain't nothing better than maple syrup, except for maybe honey. <laughs> now maple syrup's pretty good. I wanted to show you this. As the evaporation process goes on, um, you do get the scum on top. This is real light so far, so you can't move too much of it. Let's see, you can get, you want to get that off of there. throw this on snow I guess and eat that but I don't have any snow nearby but that's the stuff you want to keep taking off the top as you evaporate this sap down all on almost no budget by the way <laughs> I don't know if you can see that I've boiled down the first little bit and it already is starting to get a slight gold color to it and it does have a slight sweetness to it. So now I'm going to add some more and just keep boiling it down. It's going to be an all day process. It's going to be awesome. Now it's starting to get that golden color to it. But sometimes in life you have to adapt. And the problem I got going on here is I don't think I have enough gas in this grill to do all the sap that I want to do. Uh, it's actually going slower than I thought. So, I'm going to move it over to a little wood fire that I just made. Because I have plenty of wood. And we'll continue it over there. So here's my little impromptu uh, wood burner. I got this uh, relatively close to the house. So I brought my fire extinguisher, some more sap. And it's definitely more smoky than the gas. But, um, you know, I figure if you use two tanks of gas, that's 40 bucks. That's not as cheap as you can be. You know, we're bare, I'm on a bare bone budget, so I'm going to save the gas and burn all the scrap wood. I have all these little scraps behind here that I'm going to throw on there, plus all the stuff from the pile that was dumped here in the winter. All around here, I got scraps, so. I'm just going to use that up and do my syrup like that. It's going to have more of a natural flavor, that's all. That should work out though. Well, when you're uh, doing sap, you do a lot of sitting around, listening to little tunes. But it's uh, going good now. I just had to put together this little impromptu set up and it took a little while to get it hot enough but finally the wind calmed down and the fire was built up enough heat to where it's keeping this pot at a constant boil. The problem I'm running into is I still haven't got into the 15 gallons of sap that I had saved up. I've only been using what's been 
collecting off the trees for today, so I'm going to have to maybe try to double this up with the other canner um, and try to run two. I have enough room here and uh, try to double this process up a little bit because it's going to take a long time. <laughs> it's already about six hours, I think, into this and we're still going, so... That's why that's where a longer shallower pan would do a lot better than th like this, you know. But you gotta use what you gotta use. Whew, getting hot. Well I was able to get four half pints of maple syrup out of uh, that run that I did last night. And uh, I kind of lucked out. I'll show you here. Uh, I wasn't able to, I'm still collecting sap, um, but the one canner just wasn't breaking it down fast enough. The single, the single canner that I was using just wasn't uh, evaporating enough syrup or sap for me. Um, you saw my little burner setup, my wood uh, burner setup. I have enough room for two pans. I thought about using two canners. Uh, the problem with the canners though is you're heating up a lot of this as just open air and metal. I needed a flatter pan. So today I went by a thrift shop, a good Samaritan shop, and I donated some stuff there and in exchange for free, <laughs> it was pretty cool, I got a can uh, a broiling pan and the lid, they were together, but they don't, they don't fit together correctly. So, I might use this one as a lid for the top of that and the canner and this together, or I might flip this over and have two roasting pans that are, you know, a wider, flatter pan that'll boil up. I do like being able to cover them, but um, after filtering everything out through the cheesecloth, it's not 100% um, necessary. So, I'm gonna keep uh, working on maple syrup, but the next time I show it, I'll be using these pans instead of the canner. I think it'll work much better. <laughs> 